The Copernican Revolution by Immanuel Kant. To give a justification solid and convincing of the critique of the reason, Immanuel Kant starts from the distinction between analytical and synthetic judgments. This distinction is classical in its form, and let's see what it consists of. An analytical judgment is a judgment based on the principle of identity and non-contradiction, which affirms in the predicate a characteristic, a property already contained in the subject. For example, the triangle has three angles. Therefore, an analytical judgment does not extend our knowledge, but an analytical judgment breaks up the characteristic of the subject, giving a particular importance to some of them, or to one of them. Judgment is synthetic when it states a property which is not already contained in the subject. So it is a judgment that aims at extending our knowledge and does not necessarily rely on the principle of identity and non-contradiction. All analytical judgments are a priori. A priori means do, they do not depend on the experience, and this is also evident. An analytical judgment is necessarily true and cannot create a doubt, like it only expounds what is in, the, in a term into the predicate. Nevertheless, analytical principles are abstract and often empty. The question with the um, synthetic judgments is more complex. In fact, there is no doubt that we have synthetic judgment a posteriori which means based on the experience. Any time we express a proposition based on empirical observation, we are expressing a synthetic a posteriori. For example, if we say uh, some bodies are heavy, we know that the, the weight is not part of the definition of the body, so we are adding, extending a knowledge about bodies. But this is based on the, on the empirical observation, which means we would not know if the body, that particular body or some bodies or all the bodies uh, that we have made so far are heavy if we had not empirically observed that. We said that a judgment can be a priori or a posteriori. The question is, is there any synthetic judgment which is a priori, a priori, not based on the experience? Well, for Kant, uh, science is made of such judgments. And the example of science which is already achieved, for example, for Kant, if you say, 4 plus 7, we are a priori establishing 12 as the extension of the previous knowledge. So, if the synthetic a priori exists, what is the philosophical justification for those judgments? So, this is the question now for Kant. What is the foundation of this judgment? And here, in the answer to this question, we have what it's commonly called as the Kantian-Copernican revolution. As Copernic, by changing the, the way we look at things, we change also the explanation. For example, Copernicus, what did he do? He said, instead of considering 
us as turning around the stars, let's consider that the stars and the planets are turning around us. This is called the Copernican Revolution. Where is the analogy? Then, the analogy is that Kant says, the philosophical justification of the scientific judgment, so of the synthetic judgment a priori, is to be searched in the process of the knowledge itself, not outside it. Therefore, it's necessary to understand, comprehend this process, the process of knowing. So Kant concludes that to know is it's not just to uh, passively receive data, census information, but it is to elaborate, to synthesize, to organize these sense data according to forms which are a priori, forms of the thought. The experience has to agree or has to be integrated under an a priori form of the knowing. So Kant introduces here the terms transcendental to refer to any form which is a priori within the experience. That's interesting, isn't it? Any form which is a priori within the experience. While transcendent, it's everything that goes beyond the experience itself. So it's beyond the possibility of knowing by the mind. The transcendental activity orders the perceptions, the data coming from the perceptions, according to forms which are a priori. And this is the foundation of an a priori synthetic judgment. So, in this sense, Scientific knowledge is universal and necessary. Scientific knowledge, it's not something merely subjective. It's not temporary. It's not just an appearance. But they are true in the entire natural world, but cannot be applied beyond what is the empirical universe. These are the two elements that describe the Copernican revolution in Kantian philosophy. This short video introduces Kant epistemology. In the next video, we will look at the impact that such a shift of focus produced in the theory of knowledge. Until then, have a nice time.